Hi everybody, this is Noelle at Oakwood Village Petites. It's a great fall day and we want to talk to you about Arborvitae. And for those of you that may not know, um, the Arborvitae family has changed drastically in just the last few years where they used to just be kind of a common evergreen shrub, literally just green. And now there's all different colors, shapes and sizes. So I wanted to talk to you about those today, but also the care. What do Arborvitae need out there in the garden? And um, they are a soft evergreen plant. So they have very soft needles and foliage. Um, they used to be, the older varieties are cone bearer, so coniferous, um, but a lot of the newer varieties don't even produce cones. Um, they are, they love sun. I will have to say, and the more colorful varieties like this one, um, the more sun you have, the more direct sunlight, the better coloration on the foliage is gonna occur. Um, the greener varieties for a part shade aspect are great. Um, if you were to plant a gold variety in shade or part shade, they would probably um, fade to more of a green color. So just be aware, they really like to be in that full sun to part shade aspect. If you have a very, very deep shady aspect, they will be very likely to stretch and not perform very, very well in deep shade. So just be aware of that. Um, as far as watering and soils are concerned, um, even moisture, but well-drained soil. So you don't want to dig a hole in our clay soil and throw it in there. They really need to be in kind of a raised or mounded area where you're planting Arborvitae to make sure that they do get excellent drainage. And then watering basically would be one inch per week, standard watering for most of your plant material, especially when they get established. So at this time of year, if you're planting Arborvitae, just make sure that you're providing that one inch of water once per week thorough and deep going into later fall and early winter, um, really until the ground freezes. So do be aware of that, that they, they do need that water, um, but they really want it to be drained away from the root system. They do not like wet feet at all. Um, other than that, feeding, basically for evergreens, um, we tend to feed um, two to three times a year, typically once in spring, once midsummer, and once late fall. Um, so that works out really well. With Arborvitae, um, Espoma usually recommends the plant tone product versus the holly tone. I know it gets a little technical here, but if you use holly tone on your other evergreens, you can still use it on Arborvitae. However, it is recommended that plant tone be used along with ironite. So just be aware of that, or I said ironite, oh my gosh, old product, iron tone, sorry about that. Um, so yeah, so basically sun, water, fertilizer, and soil with them. Um, you see all these different beautiful varieties available now. Um, the globe varieties, these are all the occidentalis, so Thuya occidentalis um, varieties. They're very, very soft needled. Some of the foliage is a little bit thicker or fernier than others. Um, so the one in front here is called Fire Chief. It is an improved Rheingold um, Arborvitae. It uh, really kind of looks like this all season long or all year long, really. Um, again, beautiful kind of uh, lime green foliage at the bottom. And then it sort of um, peaches up. That's what I, I like to call it. It has that peachy hue to it at the top. Um, right behind it is Mr. Bowling Ball. Um, Mr. Bowling Ball, it will stay kind of a bluish green color. Um, it does get a little bit of a purple hue to it going into the fall and winter months, um, but very, very nice. Both of these are on the smaller side. Um, you're looking at a round mound, probably about a foot to at the most three feet tall. The fire chief is going to be right around that um, two to four foot tall mark, so rounded. These two are very alike in the respect that they have that more ferny foliage to them. Um, you've got golden globe here with the yellow. 
and then this is going to be Little Giant. And they're both a nice globe variety. Um, these guys are more low, more squat and rounded. These are going to be more um, spherical, uh, a little bit larger, right around, again, three and four foot tall, um, typically, um, and fill out and just have a little bit more upright oval, I guess maybe is the look I'm, I'm trying to describe to you versus kind of a low round mound um, here with these two. So low varieties and then of course upright varieties. And so I've got Forever Goldie here, which I absolutely love. Um, Forever Goldie and then Sugar and Spice. What's unusual about these guys is these are in a, a different species. They're called Western Arborvitae, um, Thuya Placata. And the Western Arborvitae are the ones that are very, very deer resistant. They're very aromatic as well, and they tend not to um, brown out in the center and shed as much as some of the other Arborvitae do. So do look out if you have deer issues, look for Thuya Placata or Western Arborvitae. So Forever Goldie, upright, probably around 10 foot tall at maturity, um, about three foot wide, okay? Um, sugar and spice, right around that 10 foot tall mark. Um, again, maybe a little bit taller, beautiful dark green, sort of uh, medium Kelly green with this plant, very glossy and narrow as well, about three foot wide um, as far as the growth is concerned. And this one is real popular. This is an emerald green arborvitae. Now this falls in the same category as these guys. They're the same species, Thuya occidentalis. Um, so not deer resistant, but really, really dense, very, very um, beautiful growth habit on this. Very thick, usually about 10 to 12 foot tall and probably around that three to foot mark as far as width. So again, lots of variety folks. We're gonna show you a couple more out here in the nursery, um, but we wanted to give you the details. Wanted to show you a few more Arborvitae. And again, we're into the, the green uprights back here, um, all conical shaped. The one right here, this is North Pole. North Pole is gonna be um, kind of similar to Emerald Green that I showed you where it is Thuya occidentalis. It is a soft evergreen. Um, it is showing a little bit of their yellow cones in here, um, but again, a little bit more narrow growing. This is not the deer resistant variety, so be aware, um, but narrow growing about three to five foot wide and about 10 to 15 foot tall. So often you'll see North Pole emerald green used in long hedges, windbreaks, natural screening, that type of thing. Now, we were talking about Thuya Placata. That's your Western Arborvitae. It does have more of an open habit when it's younger, like this. This is actually Spring Grove. Um, and Spring Grove, and, and you can tell, the foliage is a little bit more fan or uh, fern-like, a little bit more open habit when they're young. As they mature, they start to fill in and you can, you can actually trim them to get them to fill in a little bit faster as well. But these guys are super fast growers. And overall maturity, probably around the 20 foot mark or more. And the width, probably around, I'd say the eight to 10 foot uh, mark as far as wide. So they are a larger specimen. They make a beautiful natural screen, very, very easy as well. So just be aware. So we do have the um, Spring Grove variety, and then also this is Green Giant. And Angela's been talking about Green Giant, fantastic arborvitae, beautiful specimen. Um, again, just as tall as Spring Grove, that over 20 foot mark usually, and then about um, that eight to 10 foot wide mark. But um, beautiful, beautiful arborvitae. So again, if you need arborvitae for just a specimen, one single plant, or you need them for a natural screen, they make a beautiful upright natural screen. The lower varieties make a beautiful low hedge or can just be dotted through the landscape to give some bright color year round. Um, again, just excellent plants for full sun, part shade, well drained, but they do like moist soil again. So try to lift them up, 
mounded planting or raised bed planting and they will do great for you. Enjoy.